Hi guys, it's Clyde, and uh, here we are at the Leechburg Lights Studio. Actually, this is the Leechburg Lights Workshop, and we have our uh, little Dell laptop here, the little uh, uh, 2.5 gigahertz, 2, megs, uh, 2 gigs of RAM, and uh, we're up and running as far as our network goes. The part two that we're going to begin with is the installation and setup of Lightarama to output the E131. Now, Many of you already have Lightarama downloaded and installed and already running, and you just want to get E131 to work. Okay, that's going to come in just a minute. But what I've, I've taken the time to do already is I've gone to the Lightarama sequencing suite download. I came down here and I clicked on download now, and it took about 20 minutes to download it because I have a wireless connection here in the shop. But what I, um, whenever it was done, I selected, I, f I found the file, and I opened it up, and I did the whole run through to get Lightarama to uh, download and to be able to run. Once I had it installed, Lightarama opened up and asked me to input, um, or asked me if I wanted to register. And I inserted my key, which I'm not going to show you my key, but um, it allowed me to open up the Lightarama sequence editor. So now we're going into the sequence editor as of right now, and it's telling me we have uh, a couple of options here: uh, open a new sequence or open a new uh, a new sequence or open one. And I'm just going to cancel out of this. And there's a couple, and I've already made the modifications on this computer. There's a couple modifications that we must make in order to get E131 talking out of this uh, computer. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go up here to the edit menu and we're going to go down to the bottom where it says preferences. There's two changes we need to make here. Number one, we have to go to DMX preferences and click on allow DMX editing. I've already done so. Whenever you do that, it automatically goes away and you have to go back in and open it up and it, uh, and it shows that there is a check mark. So now you see a check mark. The next thing we're going to do is go to, in the same place, Network Preferences. Now, when this initially opens up, you see a screen that looks just like this. It says DMX Universe 1, or actually it says LOR, and a COM port, and a speed. Um, we're going to click on the DMX tab. And it's a little harder for me to operate out of the screen, so I always click on Advance, and that brings up this big screen here. And what I do is I go to a, a universe number one, and you have to set up universe number one, which default shows as zero, zero adapter and raw DMX. If I close this out, see how the rest of these, all of universe 2 through 22 here, and so on, all these other universes already come show up as none IP address and protocol DMX, raw DMX. What we have to do is when we click on that specific universe, like this is universe number two, we don't want to use an adapter. And what Lightarama is saying about an adapter, what they mean by adapter is they mean the RS485 network adapter. And we're not we're not using the adapter, the network adapter, to output raw DMX. We're using E131. So we'll come over here, and then we're going to select one of two choices. We can either select multicast, or we can select unicast, or specify which specific location that this data for universe number two is going to go. Multicast has its limits. If you have high channel counts, then multicast may have trouble getting the data up to your specific controller. So we would it, that's one of the re, that's another reason we use uh, IP addresses so that we can go in here into Lightarama and we can specify a specific IP address and what I would do is I would come in down I'd come in down here and I would change this if I wanted Universe 2 to show up on this Lightarama card. 
I would change the IP address there to match this IP address on the card. Once that change is made and I click OK, now, now it shows up here the IP address and, and the adapter setting for that universe. In this instance, though, I'm going to use multicast because it's very simple. Multicast automatically, think of it as a wide broadcast. It's like, a, it's like multicast broadcasts every bit of data to every piece of equipment that there is. The, the nice thing is, is that you don't have to be specific. It's, it's much easier. It's less stress. You don't have to figure out which and where and what, what string is connected to what output onto what controller. But if you have large channel counts, it bogs down because so much data is being pushed through our network cables that it can't, if you have large, large, uh, large data packets, then it, makes, it slows down the controllers. There's lag or there could be issues with the controllers even operating. Now, I didn't, fin I didn't have any of those issues last season. I ran roughly, um, I ran roughly 14... 15 or 16 different universes off of my show computer, which this is not. But what, uh, what, what I was able to do was I was able to use multicast in one or two specific applications because it wasn't necessary to have it in more. So going from this screen, once I know that I have this set up as multicast and uses E131, I know that I'm going to be outputting E131, anything set up for Universe 1, out of the network adapter because we already configured in the first video our network adapter to accept any data going out to specific IP addresses. When you click Apply and you've changed the setting, which I did, your network settings have been changed. You may need to close any programs in the LOR suite and start them up again before new settings will take effect. So we click OK, click OK, and we close. That's a big part. People want to just jump in and start sequencing after they did that change. Well, they have to restart the LOR sequence editor. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to open up the Lightarama control panel. It says Lightarama is now running in your system tray. I have, I have already configured this little light bulb, this little guy down here in the right hand corner, which you might not be able to see as good. He's blue. It, that means the show is enabled. If I right click on that little icon, it gives me a, a pop up screen. Um, I can open up the sequence editor from here and so forth. The network preferences can be adjusted without going into the sequence editor like I had done. Um, there's many options here, but one of the things that we want to do is it says enable schedule. It's already checked. It's grayed out. You can't enable, re-enable it while it's already enabled. If I wanted to disable the shows, then my light bulb would turn red and it would shut down all shows immediately. What this, what this light bulb is doing now is that light bulb is the control panel. It actually begins doing something what we call listening for a signal from Lightarama that is going out to either the DMX dongle or the uh, the LOR dongle or it's listening for a signal that's now coming out of E131 multicast from Lightarama because we set up the output port. Those are the two big steps in setting up our Lightarama. Now one thing that if you are just beginning this uh, this addition with Lightarama is this DMX dongle absolutely needs installed onto your system. Yesterday, whenever I began shooting this video for the first time, I took this and just plugged it in thinking, oh, it'll recognize right away that it's an LOR dongle and download download the uh, download the uh, driver for it. Well, unfortunately, it did not. And it caused me a little bit of grief until I realized, oh, okay, now that I have this plugged in and you heard the bells going off, what I suggest you do is you go back to the Lightarama website and at the top of the page you're going to see support and, and whenever you come down here you're going to see firmware updates. 
I already have the page loaded because I have slow internet out here. And on the firmware updates page, just take your scroll bar and scroll all the way to the bottom and then just scroll up a bit. RS-485 driver. I clicked download here and I downloaded this driver. When I did that, I got this driver right here. Then it's, uh, I ran it and once I ran it, it's the, um, it's the FTDI chip um, uh, driver that uh, when it extracts it and now is installing it. The driver should now be up to date again, even though I just did this yesterday. But the FTDI uh, CDM driver package is now ready to use. As soon as I did that, that told Lightarama that there is now a RS-485 adapter that it can speak to the Lightarama controllers through outside of this um, outside of outside of the computer. We can confirm this by going into um, we can confirm this by going into the sequence editor and we can confirm this by going into network preferences and clicking on the LOR tab. It says LOR networks regular network number one it's set up as COM port one at that specific speed. So now we know that Lightarama recognizes its own information coming going out to or its uh, its driver going out to its RS-485. We also know that we have fully set up into multicast universe number one using E131. And the next step that we need to follow is we need to set up our sequence so that it outputs RGB and DMX. And I think we're going to do something very simple. We're going to do a file. We're going to, we're going to open. No, we're going to do file new. And we're going to do a new musical sequence. And I have Curse of the Ice Queen saved here. And I'm not going to fill any of this information in, but um, I'm going to not. I'm not going to select. Uh, uh, well, I'll, I'll just leave this set up as as the basics. This is going to set this um, sequence up with eight channels of light aroma, which is okay. Um, I'm going to leave all this other stuff fixed, um, except for uh, one tenth of a second or some value, 0.1, which is the same thing and it'll fix the timing grid as is and I'm gonna click OK. I'm not doing anything more than than just set, setting up this brand new sequence with eight channels of light aroma. Now immediately I see eight channels. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna convert this to a group and I'm gonna convert from the first to the last group into one group and I really don't it doesn't matter to me what that is because those are set up as light aroma. What we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to set up two um, two of the uh, 27 channel easy DMX uh, controllers that you've seen from uh, uh, coming in from China that everybody's using. Okay so what we're going to do next is we're going to insert our RGB channels what we'll start out by doing is we'll start out by right clicking on insert RGB actually we're going to insert device and we're going to select insert device below we're going to leave it set up as uh, it's going to come up as add a device we're going to name it DMX it says universe number one which is as we set up earlier in our network settings that's what we set up our universe in and since they're 27 channel controllers we need two of those controllers that's what we're going to test with and we're so we're going to drop down here and we're going to choose 64 channels because two 27 channel controllers are going to take up to like 50 some channels or so we're going to click OK and then immediately we have a whole bunch of channels down here on the left hand side. Now what we have to do is these are normal light, uh, normal light aroma channels so you can either turn them on you can turn them on just like if you were sequencing but 
we have to convert these into RGBs. And the way we do this is we right click on them and we're going to convert to RGB channel. The next box it opens up, we can name the devices and we'll change the device to 27 channel CHCTRL, 27 channel controller. Now we have a red, green, and a blue. It's going to take automatically the first three channels and convert those into one channel. But I'm also going to come down here and select this, uh, also do this for following channels box. How many RGB channels do I want to make? Well, I have two controllers and I want to have 18 outputs, so I'll change the number to 18 and we'll click OK. What it just did for us was it converted all of the channels that we need for the RGB into RGB channels and you can tell be, because of the black area that is shown. Um, the rest of these could be deleted because we really don't need them but I'll just leave them there, it's okay. I just know that we're going to use 18 channels. This is the basic absolute setup that you need to start a sequence in Lightarama. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this sequence. I'm going to save this sequence. So when we come in, we'll have an L LMS file that absolutely has everything ready for us. We were able to hit the major points, which was uh, install the Lightarama uh, software, install the RS-485, set up the network preferences, allow the DMX editing, and then we inserted the DMX devices, which were the channels, um, so that Lightarama knew that these were, uh, these were DMX, and then we converted the channels into RGB channels and uh, we also enabled our show and that was one last thing that I want to show you is we now have two of these little light bulbs up here when we enable and now I'm, now I'm gonna slide over down here I'm gonna zoom in so that you guys can see this uh, down here you see the little light bulb in the system tray where it shows light aroma oh, well you can't see it it's all bright. You can't really see it very good. But there's a, trust me, there's a little, right here where my pointer is, there's a little blue light bulb that's going off here that shows that Lightarama is enabled. As soon as we set up DMX channels, then Lightarama opened up this, what they call a COM listener. And this shows, let me see if I can clear that up a little better not gonna let me there we go that's a little better it says uh, program files light aroma LOR com listener this now says that it is listening on port 883 and that light aroma is ready to begin sending packets of data through E131 this is the end of part two of our series on setting up light aroma to run E131. I hope this has been helpful so far. I apologize for rambling, but the specifics for me, um, whenever I ran through this yesterday, I had so many little errors that I, as I did it, this is the step-by-step -step that I came up with today to record. So we'll move on to the next video, so stay tuned.